Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a little bit of an algebra problem. So here's the thing. A, B, C are real numbers such that this is satisfied. A plus B plus C is 0. A squared plus B squared plus C squared is 1. Can you find what A to the power of 4 plus B to the power of 4 plus C to the power of 4 is equal to? Now, I invite you here to pause for a minimum of 5 minutes, ideally 15, not more than 45 minutes. That's a cool problem, but it's, okay. it's you know, training little algebra stuff. So, there is, there are two ways really of going about this problem. I'll go the way that I first saw, when I first saw this problem, how I, what I saw the solution to be, and I just thought it was very cool. And I remember it like to this day. I saw this back in eighth grade or something, but it's a very cool problem. So let's see, what would I do? So the solution, the, the idea is, okay, I can do one of two things. One is I can get rid of C and then I'll have both of these in terms of A and B. And I must be done. If I get rid of C, I'm done with this equation. And I only have this equation to focus on. And I need to infer from here what this is. That's pretty much it. Then that, that, that's your problem, right? And you can do this. It's decently like you can, you can sort of figure out like what you need to do if this has a sort of fixed solution, what this will be. Uh, but I want to do that. It's, it's less interesting. What I want to do is the thing I saw. So, so we square this. Why? So that we get something in really, we're going to be squaring this to get to a to the power of 4 plus b to the power of 4 plus c to the power of 4. Because that, that, that's how it, it's easier to square this than to raise this to the power of 4. Because if we raise this to the power of 4, it's going to be a mess. It's going to be a mess. It seems like it's going to be a mess. I actually don't know if it's going to be a mess or not, but it seems like it. So it's like, let's not do that. Let's just you know, raise this, square it. Well, let's see what happens when we square this. We get that a to the power, let's call this thing that we have here a, capital A. So we have a plus 2 a squared b squared plus b squared c squared plus c squared a squared is equal to what? It's equal to 1. Okay, so to figure out what a is, we need to figure out what this is. Okay, how do we get this? Well, AB plus BC plus CA squared is equal to this. So, like, and so it's going to give us this and something else. So let's square this. And once we square this, we'll have that. A squared plus B squared plus C squared plus 2. AB plus BC plus CA is equal to 0. Now, this thing right here is 1, which means this thing right here needs to be negative 1. In other words, we have AB plus BC plus CA is equal to negative 1 over 2. Okay, great. So now that we have this, we want to figure out what this is. Let's square it. So we have these squares. And we'll have a squared b squared plus b squared c squared plus c squared a squared plus 2 times this times this. That is 2 times a b squared c. Then we'll have this times this is a squared b c. Then we'll have this times this is a b c squared. So we'll have we can just get 2abc out times a plus b plus c is equal to 1 over 4 when we square this. Now, what is this? Well, this is 0. So that means this here, thing right here is going to be equal to 1 fourth, which means this thing right here is equal to 1 half. So a is equal to a half. And this finishes up our problem. Now, my question for you is, can you, is it possible to generalize? Can you figure out what a to the power of 8 plus b to the power of 8 plus c to the power of 8 is equal to? And is it possible to figure out what a times b times c is equal to? Actually, like, I don't think it is. I'm not sure. Actually, I'm legitimately not sure if it is or isn't. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe you can find out and let me know. I don't think it is because I don't think this fully defines what A, B, and C need to be. Actually, here's why it isn't. This implies that once we do this sort of substitution, we'll get that. It's A squared plus B squared plus AB is equal to a half. That's what this turns into. Now, this is a quadratic equation in A, and as such, it has a family of select for any fixed B will have a solution. 
and the solution will be equal to what is this? So like, uh, what do we have? We have minus, so this is actually minus b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus four times b squared, then it's minus a half, right? So it's like minus a half and all of this over two. That's what A is. So for every A, we have a corresponding B and then a corresponding C. And it seems to me like this doesn't follow a strict rule that tells us what this, um, what A times B times C is. It doesn't give us anything very specific. And I think this solves our problem. Uh, you could also go down this overcle road to actually figure out, okay, now I have what B and C are in terms of A, so I can just like plug that in here and figure out what A is. It's a bit of a tedious calculation if you do that. If you ask me personally, it needs to cancel everything out. Uh, the other way you could have done this is figure out, okay, this is what I have, this is my condition, the only condition I need. I'm not gonna solve the quadratic here. I am not doing that to myself. I'll in fact see, okay, what is this C to the power of four? Well, this is A plus B to the power of four. It's minus A minus B e squared. You get rid of the minus. And this gives you something interesting. And then you see, okay, I have A to the power of four plus B to the power of four plus some extra change. I mean, it's not extra change, but you realize, okay, to get A to the power of four plus B to the power of four, I need to square this. And when you square it, you are a, uh, pretty much done. Yeah, you're pretty much done. After you square it, you get that this whole thing is equal to a half. If you get, I mean, you get twice, you get, um, once you square this, you get that this thing right here is equal to a half of what you have here. And so you're done. This solves our little, like, you know, practice algebra problem. You know, you need a bit of those. Just, you know, to brush up. And this finishes up the problem. And as always, thanks for problem solving.